you lift me up. Yeah. Doesn't that sound just like Wind Beneath My Wings? Oh, so, well, okay. Bree, I don't know if it was just me, but when I asked the Gov, like, hey, can we get you to come on regularly? Was that an eye roll or? I don't know. <laughs> I got to go back and look at that. <laughs> There's something though, right? It's not just me. What it, What would you categorize that as, Jay? I don't. I don't want to say eye roll. Maybe um, like a. <laughs> maybe like a uh, wink, wink. You're cute. <laughs> you're cute, boy. Yeah, okay, boy. Um, but she was definitely uh, pumped up. You know, I mean, this is this is huge for her reelection. Honestly, that's all I see now. Is nice. That, well, for me, okay, you can look at on the, uh, in yeah, that. Yeah, let me just that t- lens, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm just like, we need it. <laughs> yeah, no, and that's what I'm saying is that that uh, I mean, if you just look at the conversation three months ago, it was like we're freaking screwed, right? There's just no way tourism is not going to restart. Uh, countries were still closed. Um, the they were talking about um, the revenues with the government of Guam, and uh, it was doom and gloom. Mm-hmm. But I feel like uh, the administration never really got serious about the discussion of furloughs or uh, reducing hours or reducing costs because I felt like they were just holding out for this huge relief package, and this is basically a six hundred sixty-one million dollar blank check for Governor Lulion Guerrero because she had said right there that they're not going to adjust the revenues uh, for the government of Guam to reflect this $661 million. Uh, She also seemed to indicate and imply that uh, she'll be calling the shots with how this money will be spent. Um, She said that the directors, uh, if they have shortages or needs or uh, wish lists, um, even the mayors have told us that they've submitted their wish list for this uh, relief package to the chief of staff. So, um, she said that uh, she's going to hear out these directors and other people uh, and they're, you know, find out what they need. And then she'll then present that uh, to the legislature. And uh, yeah. so I said, how involved should they be? And she said, well, if they have any issues or they know anything, you know, hey, reach out. I would have thought that the wish list would have already been submitted. Yeah, and that's the thing. It's like, but you know, w- when people talked about with the, with the speech and how it didn't have a lot of details, um, you would think that just because we already kind of been there, done that with $118 million of the CARES Act, that they would have already identified uh, trouble areas and problem spots in the government of Guam just to kind of throw the people a right. bone. So she kind of she kind of did, right? So just, just based on that interview. Right. So $20 million GVB. Right. There you go, Uncle 300 Carl. 300 GMH. So that's $341 million left. Right. So I want to know where... The rest of that's going to go. Right. Uh, and she was, you know, she also seemed to, kind of what I took away, just reading between the lines, was when we asked her about the RISE Act, she kind of was talking about the stimulus, uh, the stimmies that are included with this relief package. And I don't know, I kind of got the feeling that she was maybe implying that that should be good because you guys are getting 1400 mm-hmm. and then it's an additional 1400 per dependent um, in the House. So that's kind of what I took away from it, that those of you guys holding your breath on this RISE Act, um, Keep holding your breath because uh, the federal government is going to kind of step in with the stimulus, and that mm-hmm. I feel like the administration is going to be like, "Oh, well, then we don't got to worry about Rizak because you guys got twenty eight hundred or fourteen hundred. Yeah, but when Lester Carlson was on here, uh, I think it was in January, he said, "Well, it's a law, so yeah. you know." Well, there's a lot of things seemed, that are he law. Seemed that we, that we were going to pay it out. I remember there was a law about giving ten million dollars to GMH. <laughs> I'm just saying, a law ain't even a law anymore. Um, uh, but, you know, and just in continuing to unpack this interview with the governor, we were able to ask her also about uh, one of our pet issues here, which is this corruption uh, in the local law enforcement that's uh, being cited by the feds in federal court. And uh, she said, hey, my standard is high, um, that she takes it very serious and that, um, you know, she expects, uh, you know, people under her watch, under her leadership to behave a certain way. And hold people accountable. Yeah, and there you go. So there was just a, a bunch. And, well, somebody she did kind of mention by name uh-huh. uh, here. I I think she wants you to stop writing letters and maybe pick up the phone. Uh, from what the uh, <laughs> governor had said, Senator Moylan, good morning. Call me. <laughs> yeah, call me. Good morning. Yeah, yeah just call me. Yeah. Zoom me. No, but, yeah, that that's fine, and I appreciate that, and I respect the governor's time. But also, I'm one of 15, and that's what Bill 11 is about. Yeah, I, I can come and visit, uh, but do you want 14 others to come and visit too? Or Bill 11 is supposed to do that with the transparency issue. 
where we're all together as, as the representatives of the people in the Congress building and to discuss with your directors or, or yourself uh, in particular, if you so wish to do so. So I, yes, and I sat in her office before and it was really nice with Senator Chris Duenas about Bill 11 and, and listening to the governor about the reasons why we, we should not introduce that bill. Uh, but there's still a chance for a veto. I'm sorry, she did veto, I mean an override, and I think we should push that. There's $661 million why we should push that. We saw 118, and basically we were referred to the computer report uh, online that you can look at. Online, when you look at it, it's just the tip. But but even our OPA has has uh, you know, has to wait <laughs> to get answers on, on contracts, and we shouldn't. Uh, so now what are we going to do with this 116? And I appreciate uh I, I think your program was great today. I'm glad to see the governor on 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 air uh, with, with you folks. And you asked the questions like we would have in Congress too, and, and uh, in the Senate here. And that's what we need. And that's what I was hoping for. There's no way we're going to uh, remove the pandemic if it's still a requirement. Group, show us it's still a requirement. Allow us to ask these questions just like you folks did. So, so thanks for having the public hearing with the governor. Appreciate that. Yeah. What did you think though when I asked her if she can come back on? What did you see her expression? Because I'm not sure it was just me. Uh, I I saw kind of a smile. Yes, I, I couldn't read too deeply into her eyes, but um, it was good. It was very helpful to to see and hear some of the plans. It's you know some of the plans. I um, that's what the state of the island address could have been about as well. I think we had a better We're, state of the island address here this morning than they did Monday yeah. night, right? Yeah. <laughs> that that's right. You know I appreciate that. You know so we got the uh, accolades for uh, how well they done that, and that's important. Uh, where are we going to go for the future? That's what I'm was uh, you know waiting for, right? At least you got some details on. On the uh, half of this 661, the governor's consideration for a new hospital, I, I think, um, you know, it's, <laughs> yes, we do, uh, but through government funds, I, I think there's other options uh, that I, I will be proposing here uh, to do. We, we've seen what the government has run in the hospital. It, it's not our, <laughs> you know, from from the GMH where I was born on on uh, just above Hilton Hotel to the GMH where it is uh, now, where my children were born, the facilities we just aren't able to maintain. Are we going to build another hospital? What what do we expect? This I can tell you. She said we <laughs> are. She is going to Dundee. build a new hospital. Dundee. Senator, I wanted to that ask because was clear. <laughs> um, what did you make of when I had asked about how uh, involved will the senators be in uh, determining where the six hundred sixty-one million dollars is going to go? It didn't sound like you guys are going to be very involved. Well, I'm. I'm going to be very involved. I, I'm going to be vocal about it. Uh, the governor has said before, and, and I believe she'll probably keep the, her same track record of, of what she's been doing. Uh, and that's that's our governor, okay. But the legislature, we need to give our, our input, no matter what. I understand that's federal funds, you're in control of that, but we can still voice our opinion. Uh, you mentioned uh, uh, the RISE Act, and also prior to that, we had Azuda E. Mangafa. Uh, in addition to, that's federal money that was used. The first bill, uh, the first public law from Senator Amanda Shelton identified shortfalls in the federal program uh, with the uh, uh, stimulus funds under the Trump administration, right? And so we we funneled money into that where the shortfalls were. That was passed into law. And then and then uh, the RISE Act, right? Uh, again, passed into law, identifying some shortfalls uh, 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 that we can help with immediately. $661 million, uh, we, we can help more people. The, there was a comment about, oh, we're gonna get uh, $1,600 from the federal government check. Uh, that's it. I mean, yeah, of course, we're, we're thankful, but sixteen hundred dollars. We have six hundred and sixty-one um, uh, remaining, right? Six hundred and sixty-one that we can do more with. Uh, the governor mentioned the American Rescue Plan. Well, governor, you have six hundred and sixty-one million for the Guam Rescue Plan, and th that's where I think some focus should be, and that's where the legislature has to come in and and, and just say a say a few words, okay, about that. Just a few, though, it sounds like, is all you guys are going to be able to say. <laughs> what do you think, well, uh, yeah, yeah. Senator? So she I, said also that the revenues are not going to be adjusted uh, to reflect the $661 uh, million. Kind of a, 
kind of a burn deal for you senators because you're going to be left trying to come up with a budget for our local chump change. And uh, Governor Lou is going to have 600 or 300 whatever uh, million bucks to put where she sees fit. Uh, that that's correct, and it's it's not right. But like legislation was done with the last one with the Rise Act, and it passed into law, lapsed into law. Uh, there's a vehicle that we can do something about that, similar in that fashion. And and I have a a plan that we'll we'll be looking at here, and we're ready to go with. Uh, and then when it comes down to uh, to the budget hearing, um, it, it seems the governor's priorities is is the lost revenue for the government of Guam. The government of Guam. Uh, whose whose budget uh, who, who people whose staff uh, was allowed to work work from home for uh, you know close to a year nine, nine months or something like that when thirty thousand people either lost their uh, jobs or reduced in revenue and wondering when they're going to come back that are surviving on on PUA which is going to be ending with this current plan as well uh, yes it's going to get kickstarted but again it's going to end. You know, and then we're prioritizing the government of Guam for their for their uh, for their functions. Yes, I get that. Prior to the pandemic, <laughs> you know, how was their functioning then as well? The, these problems existed, but uh, the the permitting, right? This, these functions or these lacks of of functioning of processes were there prior to the uh, pandemic. Uh, thank goodness we had the uh, almighty uh, permit czar uh, coming on in this time. But I remember uh, prior to that we. We have private business people giving ideas on on how we can fix this permanent pro- permit processing that is delaying uh, what we really need to for the government to survive, and that's the small businesses to generate uh, the BBT and hire employees. Uh, we we knew that before, and, and now this this is what we're trying to prioritize this money. I think the prioritizing of this money should be in, into the public's hands. Uh, so we can regenerate the BBT uh, process and circulate these these funds. You want to put, uh, uh, you know, the, the governor's mentioned these these programs are already identified, but you got to qualify for these programs. That's the problem. If your business doesn't meet certain criteria, you're not going to qualify. If your income doesn't meet a certain criteria, you're not going to qualify. If you if you have some property that you haven't built that's on along along a cliffside that is you know you can't build on, but because you have that, you're not going to qualify as well that's that's the the requirements of the federal government and these programs that are existing so with 661 million dollars identify those shortfalls and put it back in the public's hands so they can pay their rent their utilities uh, and help their families out with food on the table you're going to wait for 1600 dollars to come in from the federal government <clears throat> i can tell you that's not going to be enough and that's what we can do by circulating that money for the people and oh, by the way I got a public hearing. I got to oh, get to. Right we're, yeah. we're uh, yeah, I just forgot about it. It started at nine o'clock. Yeah. I, I hope I'm not too late. But but we're we're uh, this this bill that we're we're talking about today is uh, to extend a lease agreement for the Guam Port Authority to the Guam Customs Authority uh, that was back in the 34th uh, Legislature uh, that would allow uh, four acres of land to continue so they can build their building and put in their X-ray requirement machines. Uh, that would help us fight from invasive species and also drugs coming into the island. So yeah. that's something we're we're working on as well. I want to change Uncle Carl's title to that. Instead of just permit czar, I want to add, what did you say? Almighty <laughs> permit czar. It just, you know, because permit and czar, the two words, they don't really go together, right? It's kind of like czar, that's up there. You know, that like that's got the balls to it, right? But, I mean, permit is, like, what? Okay, so almighty permit czar. Got right. It. I'm going to send that over to Carl. <laughs> Thank you, Senator. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Looking see forward you. to seeing the governor on your on your program in, in the near future again. Thank you. All right. Appreciate Write her yeah. a letter about it. <laughs> uh, I shall. Yeah. Okay. See, thank her. you. <laughs> okay. So I guess it wasn't just me. That was cute, though. She did give a kind of a cute look like, yeah, okay, boy. Uh, it's 907, guys. Oh, yeah. Like, are we gonna have to call in like an FBI expert in like forensics to like analyze like every the body pixel, language? Yeah, every pixel of that video and interpret. I think it was language. it is what it is. It was just there. But you know me. Come on, guys. I gotta. I always ask. Mm-hmm. Um, it's nine oh seven on the radio. 